How do you find that sweet spot and still be able to enjoy food and stay healthy at the same time? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra, and here on my channel, we're all about creating a life you love. So with that being said, we're gonna hop into today's video. So first things first, your girl stepped on the scale today and I weighed 138. My ultimate weight goal is 130. So I'm eight pounds away from my goal and that just has me geeked. And I don't know about y'all, like I've had the past two weeks, I've been sitting at 141 and people have a, a, a love and hate relationship with the scale and they don't like to weigh themselves every day. But I do like to weigh myself every day just to kind of hold myself accountable, keep myself in check. But it can be daunting when that scale does not move. But the scale finally moved and I'm in my 130s. So I'm super happy about that. But today we are talking all things about food. And honestly, I feel like food doesn't get like as much attention that it needs to get when it comes to a weight loss journey. I feel like sometimes people just focus on like, you know, weight loss classes that they need to do, how many calories they need to burn. Um, we always hear about, you know, calorie deficit, calories in, calories out. And then when you go watch like other people's um, what I eat in a day, some people eat like very, I would say like, I wouldn't say complicated meals, but people eat things like burgers and protein cookies and stuff like that. Diet can just kind of look different for everyone else. But what people don't really tell you is diet is the hardest part of the weight loss journey. It is the hardest part. Exercising is the easiest part. You don't even have to do too much. But if your diet is in check and you just move around a little bit more, you're going to be good. But you got to make sure the diet is in check. Because when I tell you guys, I used to work out, not used to, I do. I work out at least six days a week. And I've been doing this since 2017, 2018. Um, like I kind of feel like I really started to take my weight loss journey serious in 2017, like tail end of college. So that's when I started being like consistent in the gym. Um, I feel like my diet was not bad in college, like my last year because I was poor. So I don't really could afford like to shop the perimeter of the store. I had to budget like $27 for the grocery store every week. So naturally I felt like I was thinner because I didn't have access to buy all of these unhealthy foods and stuff like that. I didn't have a meal plan at the time. I was living in my college apartment and me and my roommates were kind of just like on the same kind of deal. So we were always just eating like super healthy in the moment. But I don't think what people realize is there sometimes can be a lot of guilt and like emotion attached to food. And I'm somebody who is guilty of being an emotional eater. I am not as much anymore. Um, I have found like ways and tactics to kind of get around that. But honestly, I feel like you have to kind of get therapy for some of these things because people don't realize how powerful the brain is. And it's like, if food is the only thing making you feel good, you have to figure out some other things that are going to make you feel good. Because I don't know about y'all, but like, I've been, I've been seeing lately a lot of people who have been dying on the internet from doing like mukbangs and stuff and just like simply overeating. It's just like, we have a culture of just like in America, just everything, like we just eat too much. Everything is overdone here like honestly our portions like it's just way too much we're eating way too much in general and the secret to weight loss is getting your diet in check but you can't really get your diet in check if you have like emotion and guilt attached to food so today we're going to be talking about how do you find that sweet spot and still be able to enjoy food and stay healthy at the same time so first things first is you honestly have to break up with diet culture and I'm a person who was attached to diet culture for the longest. Honestly, I have read up on diets. Like, I know you can get on YouTube and you see people making videos. Oh, I tried Khloe Kardashian's diet. I tried the Beyonce Lemonade diet. I tried um, Ariana Grande's diet. And it's like people are obsessed with trying other people's diets. People are obsessed with like, oh, I'm going to do no carb. I'm going to do vegetarian. I'm going to do paleo. Or I'm going to delete this whole food group from my diet because it's bad and labeling bad foods and labeling foods as off limits. But sometimes when you think about food as in like it's good or bad, that's not necessarily sustainable. You really just have to figure out what food works for you. And I feel like in this weight loss journey, you can't have an all or nothing attitude when it comes to food because 
especially if you're a girl, your body needs different things at different times of the month in general. Just naturally, depending on the time of day, you should be consuming different foods that are more beneficial for the certain time of day that you're in. And people don't really think about, you know, how food actually makes you feel. People just use food as a a tool of like socializing, a tool for comfort. And food is fuel. It is fuel to make you go. And a lot of times, even even myself have been like guilty of, oh, carbs are bad. I can't eat carbs. But I'm not going to lie. If I look at a plate of pasta, I'm gaining six pounds. And the thing is, I don't necessarily think it's bad. I think I just, well, I, I know I have a gluten sensitivity. So I'm not necessarily gaining those six pounds. I'm gaining like inflammation. I'm gaining bloat. I'm having a retention of water. So it's not necessarily bad it's just not the carb for me you have to find you know what works for you so now I do like a gluten-free pasta or I do a a lentil pasta so there are healthy alternatives to some of the things that you label as bad or off-limits but the thing is when you do that it's just not sustainable guys and you may say oh I'm never eating carbs I'm never eating carbs you don't eat carbs for hey two years the next thing you know it you just want to start dibbling, dabbling back in carbs and then your body like blows up because your body hasn't had this in, in so long. And honestly, when you start to reintroduce the things that you consider as bad foods or off limits back into your diet, you're probably going to gain the weight a lot faster than you would if you just ate it in moderation and found the balance within yourself to do so. What people have to do is they have to learn how to enjoy food while making healthier choices. Um, Food doesn't have to really be attached to shame, but a lot of people do have it attached to to shame. But instead you need to really focus on how foods actually make you feel. Like just for example, for me, I was a person who just like loved coffee. I would wake up, have coffee. But then I started to notice like I got really bad like heart palpitations from coffee. So it's like I had to take coffee out of my diet. But it's just like coffee is a part of like corporate America just in general. People are getting their coffee before they go to work. They're going to Starbucks. They're getting coffee at work. And it's just like it's a it's a it's a culture associated with with it, I would say. And when you have like coffee, you might even be putting more stuff in it than it needs to be but um instead like I started to start my day off instead of having the coffee because not only would I have like bad heart palpitations but I would get it at get it at night and it's just like I had this coffee at 6 a.m it's no reason that I'm having trouble sleeping so the moment I took coffee from my diet and I'll still have it like here and there, but I won't drink the whole thing. Even if it's just, you know, a small serving from, um, Starbucks, like a tall or something, but taking it out your diet. Um, I forgot what I just said. Oh yeah. So once I started taking it out of my diet, um, I replaced it with something like maybe I can do a, a fresh pressed juice or do like greens powder, Um, And that actually makes me feel like a lot more like energized versus like coffee. Coffee will give me a crash, but instead I'm fueling my body with stuff from the earth. Even though coffee is from the earth, it is a stimulant. And instead we should be putting foods in our body that are going to make us feel good. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like a lot of people do this. A lot of people do like fasted workouts. They just go to the gym and don't realize your body is like a car. So you wake up in the morning, you go to the gym, you're on E, and you're realizing like, why am I having such a hard time focusing during this workout? Why do I have zero energy during this workout? It's because a lot of times you're going to the gym fast it because you're thinking oh this is going to make me skinny like this is going to make me go into fat burning mode but a lot of times you need some freaking carbs in your body before you even start working out so maybe have a banana have some oatmeal have something in the tank guys food is fuel and that is what you have to remember so next we're kind of just going to go into you have to find your nutritional balance and this kind of just starts with mindful eating And when we think mindful eating, people are like, oh, mindfully, I want some pizza. Mindfully, I want Chick-fil-A. Mindfully, like, and the thing is, like, you can't just go with what you feel. Like, you have to learn to listen to your body. 
And a good thing that I picked up on very early on, it was like, I'm like, why am I craving this? Why do I, I feel like my body needs this. So I actually did some research on like how to handle like your food cravings. And I've, I came across this chart. Um, I'll put the chart on here so you guys can see. But it's like, okay, if you're craving like chocolate, if you're a sweets eater, like if you're craving chocolate, your body actually needs magnesium. So instead of grabbing the chocolate, go for some nuts, some seeds, vegetables, and fruits, and then see how you feel, right? That can help you combat that craving. Say if you're a person who likes sweets and sugary foods, your body needs chromium, carbon, um, phosphorus, sulfur, and I don't know that last word. And it says some things that kind of help with that craving, and what to eat instead is broccoli, grapes, fresh fruit, nuts, veggies, cabbage, cauliflower, sweet potatoes, spinach. Like start to find the alternatives to your cravings. You have to be stronger than your cravings in this in this situation because the the diet is the hard part. I mean, the yeah, the diet is the hard part. Working out is easy, but once you clean up the diet and figure out what works for you, your life is going to be so much easier. The weight is going to start to fall off. Um, another one, I'm like, my family, we're big on bread. We're, we love some carbs. So they say in this situation, you need nitrogen. Your body needs dark leafy greens like kale, collard greens, nuts and seeds. And I would just say like a lot of these say like alternative is like nuts and seeds. So keep nuts and seeds in your house. Keep some pistachios, keep some cashews. Like I don't know about y'all, but I love pistachios. And I feel like it's a quick, easy like little snack and it'll actually fill you up. So try to look into how to handle your food cravings and not necessarily like fall into your food cravings. And the thing is, I feel like we attach so much like non-seriousness to what we put in our body these days. Like people make so many jokes about like, oh, I'll start that diet next week. It's not that serious. But life is serious. Like you should want to put the best things in your body so you can live a long time, fulfill purpose, like live long for your kids, live long for your family, do things, explore the earth, like be able to do stuff and do it in the best body that you can feel healthy and vibrant while doing it. But that starts with actually fueling your body with the right stuff. Why cut your lifespan years short just because you want to dibble and dabble it with with candy and sweets and treats and it's like you can find healthy alternatives to this stuff like it's so easy to find healthy alternatives like I just showed you guys there's a chart to help you combat your cravings we have chat gbt you can type in chat gbt hey I'm craving x y and z what are some things that can help me not crave this like you have the information and resources at your hand to not be in this situation but you have to be like stronger than your cravings in this situation. And honestly, it's not going to happen until you make the decision yourself. And that is something that I, I honestly had to do. I just really had to let go of like the attachment to food. And that can be hard because a lot of us have trauma and trauma is attached to the food. Food makes us feel good when the world is treating us like crap. Like when everything is kind of just going crazy, like, you know, having some food is going to make you feel good. And I know a lot of people like that. It's not just me. But even like going back to the nutritional balance. So we did mindful eating and listening to your body. Now we have to get into this portion size. I don't even think people realize like we have abs astronomically I don't even know I don't even know if that's the word but like our portions are way too big for what we actually should be eating on the day today when you get a bag of chips you would think it's just one serving of chips in the bag but honestly it's most of the time it's like three or three and a half servings of chips in a bag. So you have to be mindful about that. So if you're eating three bags of chips a day, you're eating what? Three, 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 six, nine, nine servings of chips. Therefore, you just wasted, I think chips is like maybe like 240 calories per bag. I mean, per serving. So 240 times a nine, you just ate 2,160 calories on chips like this is nothing that is gonna necessarily make you feel good there's not necessarily a whole bunch of like um micronutrients in it to even help you so it's like we have to be mindful of our servings even I've been vegetarian for like 
on and off for the past few years. And honestly, I'm just like, I eat so healthy. I literally only eat vegetables, potatoes and rice. And I'm like, I don't understand how you can overeat vegetables, potatoes and rice. But like I, I was so addicted to food, I would put extra potatoes on my plate. I would put extra rice on my plate. And even when you just think about like when you have to prepare the food, when you're making vegetables, you're not just chopping up vegetables and putting them in the oven. Like you're going to put a little bit of oil. You're going to put salt. Like you're going to like season them up. And it's like sometimes if you have too much salt, it's going to make you retain water. And you're going to think you're gaining weight. You're going to think you're big. And you're going to think you're bloated. And it's like you have to be mindful of the stuff that you're actually putting into your body. And I also would just think like, oh, it's vegetables. It's it's not going to like be bad. But it's like. If you overdo it, if you overdo anything and you overdo your calories, you're going to gain weight. It doesn't matter what it is, but you have to be realistic about what a portion size is. And sometimes we're just honestly eating too much. And I can honestly say that was my problem. I was just eating way too much. What you get at a restaurant is probably two or three servings. So honestly, now when I go out to eat, I don't take my food home with me. I just leave it at the restaurant because it's like you go out to eat, you enjoy the moment, but I. I was bringing the moment home and I was still eating the food the same night when, when essentially when you should have leftovers, you probably should be eating your leftovers the next day. But I also come to the realization, I don't really like leftovers. I don't like meal prep. I don't like to do none of that stuff. So a easy thing for me is to just leave the food at the restaurant. I don't care about wasting money, all that stuff. Like, honestly, I would rather waste money than to waste calories. I don't know about y'all, but that's just how the cookie crumbles for me. But Another thing to think about when you're finding your balance is make room for the flexibility. Um, I'm a person, I enjoy alcohol. Me and my fiance, most weekends, we're going to have a drink. We're going to go out with friends. We're going to have a social drink. We have a Bartesian sitting on our counter. We have tequila sitting on our counter right now. Like I just went to Austin a few weeks ago for my aunt's birthday and we were drinking bourbon like my family drinks alcohol like we just do they drink wine they drink everything and I hate to sound like an alcoholic right now but I'm not like I'm not drinking every day but I am a social drinker and I'm gonna have a drink on the weekend or even if I don't have a drink we're still gonna go out on the weekend and we're still gonna go to a bar or we're gonna go to top golf or we're gonna go somewhere where it's just like bar food it's not real healthy food so to make room for that flexibility I eat well throughout the week I also work out on the weekend so I'm having some sort of deficit to intake those calories so you have to make room for the flexibility if you still want to enjoy some of the things that you like but just because you like something doesn't mean that you need to have it every day. And I think that's the biggest thing that people have to realize. Like just because you like chocolate, that does not mean you need to eat a Twix or a Kit Kat every day. Just because you're pissed off, that doesn't mean you need to go grab like a Kit Kat or like hot Cheetos or something. And like I was a person who was very guilty of this. I'm like, oh, I'm PMS and I need hot Cheetos. And it's just like, I can't even tell you the last time I had some hot Cheetos because now I go to like this food craving chart and I figure out how to fuel myself with good, good like foods. And I don't even think you realize like how good you're actually going to feel when you actually start to put real food in your body, guys. You are like a car and your body needs high quality fuel and your high quality fuel is going to come from having, you know, those whole foods in your life. Some of my favorite go-tos now that I don't necessarily reach for all of these processed snacks or just things that aren't good for me, but some things that really help me with cravings or make me feel good or just are good to have on hand to have in your house because sometimes you might not be hungry for like a long time and the next thing you know it's like you're starving and you're like I don't feel like cooking or I just need to eat something now and then sometimes you'll just rather go to the store and, or go to McDonald's or go to Chick-fil-A and just grab something instead of just cooking and most of the time like the calories that they tell you are in the food at these Chick-fil-A's McDonald's Wendy's it's actually more calories than it says on their website because you don't know how much oil and stuff are actually going into these meals so it's just better to have some stuff on hand to kind of just help you fuel your body and something that is like my go-to but I have to be in the mood for so if I'm in the mood for it I'll meal prep some boiled eggs like early on in the week boil a few crack them 
put them in the refrigerator and I like to do like different things with them. Sometimes I'll season them up. I don't know if y'all saw this, but like on TikTok, they do like these egg flights and I've kind of been obsessed. So something that I've been doing is like, I've been using QP mayo. I think it's called like QP mayo. And, um, they actually do this at lifetime, my gym. And instead of paying $3 for three eggs, I have eggs at home. So I just made the sauce at home and it's just like mayo hot sauce. And like you season it up and you put paprika on the eggs and they call it deviled eggs at the store. I mean, at lifetime, but, um, I can make that at home and save money for one. So I do like to have boiled eggs on the go, just in my refrigerator, something to grab, um, has protein. It's going to help you feel full. Um, I do have like Greek yogurt in the house. I have to be in the mood for Greek yogurt because Greek yogurt to me tastes like sour cream. I don't even care if it's the flavorful kinds. It still tastes like sour cream to me, but I do make sure I have those just on in, in my house in general. Um, I even have a few in the freezer because you can even like add it to a smoothie to have some like extra protein and make your smoothie like creamier. And that pushes me into my next thing. It's like, I go to H-E-B and they have these like smoothie packs. They're like $2. I just grab a few of them just to have them in my refrigerator for an easy smoothie. Everything's already in the smoothie pack. You don't have to think about, oh, I need to go get this fruit. I need that fruit. Put the stuff in the smoothie, in the blender with the liquid that you want, protein, collagen, whatever you want. Have stuff like that on hand. I love seaweed strips. I never thought I would because I don't like sushi. And I know they use the seaweed to like roll the sushi. But I'll eat some seaweed strips and seaweed strips, they're like loaded with iodine. So there are some micronutrients in the in this that can kind of just help you out, especially like if you're a person with, you know, thyroid issues. Sometimes you don't have enough iodine. So a good snack like that is a good go to. I do skinny pop if I if I want because I feel like popcorn is usually like low in calories. So it's a good go to to have at the house, too. Dark chocolate, if I actually want candy, I rarely want candy. And if I do want candy, it's usually like when I'm like PMSing. So I do have like dark chocolate. I I love this kind. I get it from Whole Foods. Showed it in my last video. Dark chocolate with like dried raspberries in it. So good. Um, And then like my go-to dinner, just as a vegetarian or a pescatarian, whatever, whatever I'm feeling like in the moment, it's a pan sheet of vegetables. People are like, how can you just eat vegetables? Get you a big old cooking sheet. Chop up peppers, onions, broccoli, asparagus, like whatever vegetable. Just throw it on the pan. Season it up. If you are a meat eater, put your chicken on the pan. Put your fish on the pan. Like, Cook it all together and you have like an easy go-to dinner for a few days. And then just throw a little carb with it. Throw some potatoes with it. Throw some rice with it and put it all together. And you've got some sort of like big old Buddha bowl or stir fry or whatever. You can make little dressings and stuff to put on top of it. But like that is like a, a way that I personally eat. Um, I don't like to make things complicated because if it's too complicated, and this may be the ADHD in me, if it's too complicated, I'm not going to make it. It has to be easy. It has to be simple. It has to be, like, easy grab and go. And even if I, like, go out to eat or if I want something while I'm out, I usually just get a salad. And if I want something fried, I haven't really been into fried foods lately. I feel like once you kind of stop eating them, they taste disgusting to you, to you. Honestly, if you just give yourself a break, you won't really, like, try to – you won't you won't want it anymore, I promise you. But – um. I don't know. Ever since I'm in Texas, like they have fried green tomatoes at like most restaurants. So I usually just do like a Caesar salad and some fried green tomatoes. And it's like, that's what I'm, what I eat when I'm out. Um, but it's just like, you don't know what you're getting while you're out. So I feel like it's just easy and simple to have stuff at home. And like I said, in the beginning, if you're a person who likes to have fun with your food, likes to enjoy food, likes to eat out and stuff, make flexibility for it. Make sure you're working out and you're putting yourself in a deficit or make sure you're eating like super clean throughout the day if you know you're going to go out to eat for dinner. So stuff like that. It's little things like that can just truly help out your weight loss journey. And remember, like food is fuel. I keep saying this, guys. Food is fuel and it is meant to be enjoyed. Um, and you really just have to find your balance. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this again. You cannot outrun a bad diet. And honestly, diet 
and like your attachment to food is going to be the hardest part of this journey. But once you get that part in check, guys, it's going to be easy breezy. And I'm telling you, super easy breezy. Get rid of the food guilt. Get rid of the emotion attached to food. Figure out what you're supposed to be eating. Figure out your calorie deficit, your numbers. Be mindful with it. Have portion control and really just learn to listen to your body. And it's just all going to work out. And that may sound like positive patty, positive patty here. But like seriously, it's really truly all about what you put what you're putting in your putting in your body. It is truly all about what you're putting in your body. I mean, weight loss is going to be 80% diet, 20% fitness. So clean up the diet and everything else will fall into place, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you have got, if you guys have any like specific questions you want to know about weight loss, let me know down below. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Kissing in Paris, I guess we could do it in French. Wow. Eating low main is child for now. Child, child. She got me wildin' now. Rory Italian, child for now. Child, child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she making that shake. Breaking that bait till her back break. break.